Hey everyone, uh, this is the next video in the series on intermolecular forces. Uh, we'll just finish up discussing other forces. Uh, and, uh, so from uh, ion dipole forces to dipole dipole forces, and those really, really strong dipole dipole forces that, um, that some silly chemists started calling hydrogen bonding. Then we looked at some induction forces that don't usually get covered in the course, but I thought they might be handy to discuss the last force, which was those dispersion forces or London dispersion forces. Those very, very temporary induced dipoles in two polar molecules. Sorry, two non-polar molecules. Words. Okay, had a bit of a history lesson and rant, and we got up to this table. This table is going to help us to consider some examples and I might show you the first I'm going to work through some examples here so let's look at this problem this type of problem what intermolecular forces exist between two molecules of chloromethane so problems where they're asking you or you need to determine in order to do the problem what intermolecular forces exist between two particular types of molecules we're going to do those type of examples so I put together this table to help us out uh, the first question are both particles nonpolar because if they are there's only dispersion forces so you've got this uh, branching off to the side here makes it easier gets that out of the way if there's only two nonpolar molecules there's only dispersion forces Okay, if not, we need to consider how many are polar, okay? If only one of the two is polar, it becomes a bit more confusing, okay? Um, the possibilities that it could be then, if only one of them is polar, you could have a polar with a non-polar molecule, and then you've only got dispersion forces, and you've also got, if you want to go in a bit deeper, you've also got that dipole induced dipole happening okay or one of them is an ion you've got an ion and a polar molecule so you've got ion dipole okay the other possibility is both of them are polar and so then we've got dipole dipole attraction happening and now all we need to consider is the strength of it is it really really strong that dipole dipole attraction so that we can put that horrible label to it hydrogen bonding so do both molecules have intramolecular bonds between hydrogen fluoride hydrogen and fluorine hydrogen and oxygen or hydrogen and nitrogen if it does it meets the criteria of calling it that horrible name hydrogen bonding if not it's just plain you've also dipole dipole and you've also got dispersion forces here too okay Let's do a number one example. I put the forces here on the left hand side kind of as a, as a check, check box. Okay, what intermolecular forces exist between two molecules of chloromethane? Okay, I've given you the formula, but we need to go right back to the beginning. Are these molecules polar? Well, do they have polar bonds in them? What's their shape? Okay, let's get a Lewis dot structure of it. Uh, we can kind of go a bit faster because we know carbon can have four bonds. We can see there's three hydrogens and a halogen, so we can put the chlorine in the middle. I might go a bit smaller there. Chlorine in the middle, and we've got one single bond, single bond. Okay, this carbon can have a single bond to the chlorine there. Okay, I'm putting my lone pairs in there as well. So there's carbon tetrachloride. It's like methane, but one of the hydrogens is replaced by chlorine. Okay, how many bonding regions? Let's count them. There's four actual bonds and there's no long pairs. So there's four bonding groups or four bonding regions and four actual, so it must be tetrahedral. I'll write that down because why not? And let's draw our dashed in wedge shape we've got a hydrogen coming out at us so um shade that in and we've got a dashed the chlorine i'm going to put the lone pairs on there too okay we've got our shape now let's start to diagnose polar bonds let's do another color okay 
The carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar because the electronegativity difference is less than that 0.5 benchmark. So nonpolar, nonpolar, nonpolar. The carbon-chlorine bond is quite polar. Um, so let's put our delta negative and delta positive on the polar bond. Our delta negative is with the chlorine because it's further to the top right of the periodic table. And look at these lone, three lone pairs of electrons, delta negative. So that makes the carbon delta positive. Let's put our vector in. So the base of it with the positive, that's why it has that positive cross, and the head with the chlorine. Now, is the molecule polar? Well, we've only got one polar bond in there, nothing that's equal and opposite, so it's a polar molecule. Okay, we've got a polar molecule. Chl chloromethane is a pol polar molecule, okay. So I've got two of them interacting. Well, I've swapped to my eraser. Two of them interacting. What's the forces between them? It's hard to think and draw at the same time. <laughs> I'm terrible. Okay. I'm gonna draw them both this way. We need to consider the intermolecular forces between them. Uh, thinking at the same time. Okay, now uh, let's start down the bottom there. Ion dipole. Well, we've got one dipole, but we don't have an ion, so pff, no, that's out. Okay, let's move down to dipole dipole. Have we got two polar molecules? Well, yeah, they're both polar, so we have got dipole dipole. Notice I'm doing dipole dipole before hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is just really, really strong dipole-dipole. So if you don't have dipole-dipole, you cannot have hydrogen bonding. Very big mistake that people make. First you diagnose dipole-dipole, and then you go, well, is it strong enough? Okay, let's do that now. We've got dipole-dipole, okay? The criteria for hydrogen bonding between two molecules are that both molecules within them must have a hydrogen covalently bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, okay? So our molecules are identical, so let's just diagnose it in one. We've got hydrogen, sure. Doesn't mean we have hydrogen bonding, okay? We have hydrogens, what are they covalently bonded to? Well, they're covalently bonded to carbon, okay? The carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar, so we haven't got hydrogen bonding between these two molecules because our molecules are not polar enough, okay? So we haven't got hydrogen bonding, but we've got dipole-dipole. Okay, our two induction forces, ion-induced dipole and dipole-induced dipole. So they need one, one non-polar molecule. Um, both of our molecules are polar, so no, scrub them out. Okay, lastly, the weakest one, dispersion forces. The question is, with dispersion forces, is have I got something there with electrons? Yes, we've got electrons. When they get close enough, they're going to polarise a little bit. They're going to force a temporary dipole slightly. So yes, we have got dispersion forces between these two molecules of chloromethane. Okay, so... What two intermolecular forces exist between two molecules of chloromethane? Well, there's dipole-dipole attraction and dispersion forces. Should I write that down? Nah, I ticked it off there. All right, example two. What intermolecular forces exist between two molecules of water? All right, we know our structure of water. Purple, why not? Purple water, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And we know that there's two lone pairs up there. Start from first principles if you don't know. Okay, so there's our two molecules of water. Uh, four bonding regions, uh, because there's two lone pairs, so they're bent at 109.5 degrees. Okay. So we've got our structure of water there, our Lewis dot diagram. We've also started to investigate their shape there. There's four bonding regions. Should I write this down? Four bonding regions. Because there's one, two covalent bonds and two lone pairs. 
but two actual bonds equals bent at 109.5 degrees. If you can't remember that, back to video one of this chapter, okay? So we've got these two bent molecules. Uh, let us um, start to assign polar bonds. Is the oxygen bond polar? Yes. There's enough electronegativity difference between them. Which is the more delta negative? Well, the one that's further to the top right of the periodic table. It's also the one with the lone pairs on it. Delta negative on the oxygen, delta positive on the hydrogen. We've also got two of these bonds here, okay? Now, let's draw in our vector. I'm swapping colors like there's no tomorrow. The positive down near the partial positive and the arrowhead up near the negative. Okay, we've got two polar bonds here. Is the molecule polar? Well, are the bonds equal in magnitude? Well, the dipole bonds. Yes, they are because they're both between oxygen and hydrogen. Are they opposite? Well, they're mirror image of each other, but they're not exactly opposite. They have a net dipole in the top direction. Think about those two people pushing at that angle. They may be pushing equally, but there'll be a forwards movement because they're both pushing in that upwards direction. So water is polar. Okay, so we've got two polar molecules. Okay, what intermolecular forces exist between these two molecules of water? Well, is there an ion? No, there's two polar molecules. Ion dipole's gone. Dipole, dipole, is there two polar molecules? Yes, check, got one. Okay, while we're on dipole, dipole, is it strong enough to satisfy the criteria for hydrogen bonding? Okay, that means if there's really, really strong attraction between them, that there must be, within both molecules, an intramolecular bond between hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen and fluorine, or hydrogen and nitrogen. Okay, look what we've got here. We've got bonding between oxygen and hydrogen. That means that these polarities are really strong. There's a lot of dipole-dipole attraction between them. Very, very strong dipole, tra dipole attraction, which some chemists called hydrogen bonding. Okay, so they're really attracted to each other dipole dipole Check, hydrogen bonding. Okay, for the induction forces, we need a nonpolar molecule. And both molecules are polar. Cross them out. Okay. Have we got dispersion forces? Well, have we got electrons? Yes. Check. Okay. So there's three intermolecular forces between two molecules of water. There's dispersion forces, of course, because they've got electrons. There's also dipole-dipole attraction between them. And that dipole-dipole attraction is strong enough to also say we have got hydrogen bonding. Okay. So these two will be attracted to each other. I'm going to redraw them. There's our delta negative. There's our delta positive. The positives and negatives are going to line up. They're going to line up hydrogen to oxygen between two molecules. Uh, Gray. So delta positive, delta negative. Delta negative, delta positive. The delta negative and delta positives are going to line up. And sometimes hydrogen bonding or intermolecular forces are showed by dashed lines rather than those solid ones. So they're going to have two water molecules, very, very strong attac attraction between them. And that's why it boils at such a high temperature for small molecule. Um, but we'll talk about that more at the end of the chapter. Coming up soon. Preview. Um... Example three, what intermolecular forces exist between one molecule of methane, not one molecules, terrible copy pasting there, one molecule of methane. So here I've changed it up and had, or oh, let's do instead of two identical, two different ones. 
Okay, we've got methane and ammonia. So we need to draw and work out the shape and polarity of each. So methane CH4, four bonds around there, each has its, well, the carbon has its eight electrons and hydrogen has its two. So it is four bonds and four actual bonds, sorry, four bonding regions, four actual bonds, it's tetrahedral. So it's actually, do, 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 dashed and wedge it because it's three dimensional, wedge, dash. It's actually tetrahedral like that. Okay, polarity of car uh, carbon, polarity of methane while we're here. We've got four bonds and they're all the same and they're between carbon and hydrogen. We've got four carbon hydrogen bonds. The carbon hydrogen bond is non-polar because its electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is less than 0.5 on that polling scale. So I've got four non-polar bonds. So all bonds, bonds are non-polar, so non-polar molecule. Okay, let's switch over to uh, ammonia. Let's draw it in. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five. Hydrogen has one. Hydrogen has one. One, put our bonds in. Covalent sharing. Okay. Each hydrogen now has two electrons. And the nitrogen has two, four, six in its bonds. And then a lone pair, which is the eight. Okay. So how many bonding regions have we got? Well, we've got three actual bonds. One, two, three, and a lone pair. So that's four four bonding regions but we have three actual bonds so it's based on tetrahedral but it's missing a bond so it's trigonal pyramidal with a nitrogen in the middle lone pair hydrogen it is three-dimensional so I'm gonna dash and wedge that okay trigonal pyramidal okay have we got polar bonds here the nitrogen hydrogen bond is polar because their electronegativity difference is greater than 0.5. The delta negative, the more electronegative atom, will be further higher up and to the right. That will be the nitrogen. And look, it's got a lone pair as well. Likes its electrons. So its hydrogen is delta positive. So we've got three polar bonds here from the positive with the base. Draw our vectors in. Okay, is the molecule polar? Okay, well, are the bonds equal? Yes, they're three and they're equal. Are they opposite? No, because of this three-dimensional, because of these, they're all slightly pointing up. They cancel each other in a roundabout way, but they all point up to an overall net dipole for the molecule in this upwards direction. So polar molecule. Okay. Now, the forces between them. We've got a non-polar molecule and a polar molecule. Okay, we haven't got an ion. We haven't got ion dipole. Okay, do we have dipole dipole? Well, we don't have two polar molecules, so no, we don't have dipole dipole. And because hydrogen bonding is just strong dipole dipole, we also don't have hydrogen bonding. Okay, the induction ones need a non-polar molecule. Ah, we have that. We have a non-polar molecule and a polar molecule. When the polar molecule gets near the non-polar molecule, it's going to induce and attract electrons so that they're unevenly distributed about the methane. So it's going to induce a dipole. So it's a dipole inducing a dipole. So we have dipole-induced dipole. We don't have an ion, so get rid of ion-induced dipole. Okay, do we have dispersion forces? Do we have electrons? Check. Okay, so between these two molecules, there are two forces. And even for the HSC, you could just say that they're dispersion forces. I'm just pushing a little bit more with this induction. So there are there is a dipole-induced dipole. The ammonia, if I can spell, is inducing the methane to become polar when it's close and there is also dispersion forces one of the hints whenever you get a question in the hsc 
what uh, intermolecular forces exist between these two, uh, get one mark, get a partial mark, just by saying, oh, it's two things with electrons. Uh, just write down dispersion, 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 dispersion. Oh, I'm terrible. Just write down dispersion forces. I'm trying to go too quick, aren't I? All right, example four. What intermolecular forces exist between the chloride ion and one molecule of water? Chloride, Lewis dots, it's got its eight, it's got its one extra, uh, so it's negatively charged, and we've got our water molecule that we did earlier. So we know that it's bent, and we know that it's a overall delta negative, delta positive in this direction. Okay. Do, do, do. Let's look at our forces. Ion dipole. Well, we've got a polar molecule and we've got an ion. Check. We've got an ion dipole force between them. Okay. We haven't got dipole dipole because we haven't got two polar molecules and therefore we don't also have hydrogen bonding, which is just really, really strong dipole dipole. Okay. Do we have a, a nonpolar molecule? No. So we don't have induction happening. Do we have electrons? Yes, we do. Check, we have dispersion forces between them. Okay, so how the chloride and the water are going to interact? The chloride's negative, it's going to be attracted to that delta positive. And so what's going to happen is, do, 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 um, you're going to get this attraction happening between them, where it is both, oh, I should put in the, Delta positive, delta negative. So you can see negative attracting positive. It's going to be ion dipole force and it's also going to be a bit of dispersion. That negative is going to attract, a, sorry, push electrons even further that side. So there's going to be a touch of dispersion, very insignificant in size though, compared to the ion dipole force, which is the main attractive force and the strongest between the two. Number five. What are we doing here? Between the sulfate ion and one molecule of ethane. Oh, the sulfate ion, SO4, two minus. So we've got an ion and we've got ethane. Bit of practice, you can see that if there's two carbons, they must be bonded to each other and the rest of the bonds must be taken up with hydrogens. Each carbon has its four bonds, so it has its octet. Each hydrogen has its two uh, S1 orbital electrons, so it's all happy. So there's ethane there. Okay, I'm not gonna do a shape of the sulfate ion right now. We have done it earlier. I'm not too concerned about that. I want to know whether the ethane is polar. Okay, the carbon-carbon bond is nonpolar because one doesn't pull on electrons more than the other. The electronegativity difference is zero. The carbon-hydrogen bond, as we have been discussing, is nonpolar as well. So ethane is a nonpolar molecule. Okay, so we're talking about an ion and a nonpolar. Okay. Ion dipole. Well, we don't have an ion and a polar, so that's out. Dipole dipole. Well, we don't have two polar molecules, so it's out. And hydrogen bonding is just strong dipole dipole, so it's out too. Okay. So, induction. Do we have a nonpolar molecule? Yes. Okay. We've got one type of induction. What's doing the inducing? An ion. An ion induced dipole. Check. Okay. Get rid of the other one. Have we got electrons around these? Yes. Check. We've got dispersion forces. So we've got an ion-induced dipole. When they come closer to each other, because this has a negative charge, it will push the electrons over to the opposite side. So it will make... Oh, I want to go back. It will make this side more negative and this side more positive because it will get closer and push the electrons over to the other side. So it's inducing a dipole. It's making this nonpolar ethane be very, very slightly polar temporarily. Very weak force. Okay. What intermolecular forces exist between a molecule of water and one of ammonia? All right. 
we've both dealt with we've both dealt with these before um we've dealt with both of these molecules before let's take a shortcut and get to this point we've got the shapes already we know that they are both polar molecules because they all have polar bonds so it was up that way the positive was down this end and the same with water it was polar as well up that way as well how I have drawn it okay so we've got two polar molecules polar polar okay do we have an ion dipole well no we don't have an ion do we have dipole dipole yes because we've got two polar molecules okay do we have really really strong polar do we have enough to call it this silly name hydrogen bonding are there let's look in the bonds of each okay are there hydrogens bonded to oxygen well there's hydrogen bonded to oxygen or hydrogen bonded to nitrogen or there's hydrogen bonded to nitrogen or fluorine well we don't have fluorine so in two of the molecules we've got the criteria of a covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen and hydrogen so between them there's going to be because they're very polar that diagnosis because they have those intramolecular bonds means they're very polar so that both of them are going to attract each other really really strongly we've got enough to call it hydrogen bonding okay we don't have a non-polar molecule so we don't have induction happening but we have electrons so we have dispersion forces so the three forces that exist between water and ammonia are hydrogen bonding di well sorry i should start with dipole dipole attraction strong enough to call it hydrogen bonding as well and we've also got dispersion forces between them so when they attract each other the positives and negatives are going to line up so somewhat like this the negative end is going to line up with the positive end and you're going to get an intermolecular attraction between the two that is really really strong dipole dipole attraction and if you want to call it hydrogen bonding that's fine um, and a little bit of dispersion forces there they're going to push their electrons around just a touch and that's very very minor all right we've got one last example what intermolecular forces exist between a molecule of methane and carbon dioxide all right we've already done methane i've already discussed how it is a non-polar molecule because it consists of four bonds between carbon and hydrogen which is a non-polar bond so it's a non-polar molecule if i can talk properly I'm trying to talk as slow as i can write okay let's look at carbon dioxide carbon one two three four oxygen one two three four five six one two three four five six okay single bond single bond uh we've still got electrons left over bring that electron in <laughs> that's terrible i'm gonna go back change the color oh excuse me and bring in one of those bring in one of those bring in one of those what do we get we get carbon double double bond to oxygen double double bond to oxygen two lone pairs on each oxygen so each atom in there now has the octet i've got two bonding regions one two and two actual bonds so it must be linear so it is actually shaped in a straight line okay do we have polar bonds here the carbon oxygen bond is polar um which one's the most electronegative well the one that's more towards the top right of the periodic table so our oxygens are delta negatives and our carbons delta positive draw in our vectors with the positive towards the positive the positive base okay these bonds are they equal yes they're both between carbon and oxygen are they opposite yes they're both completely opposite 180 degrees they cancel each other out so we have a non 
polar molecule. If I can spell. Okay, so we've got two non-polar molecules. We don't have ion dipole. We don't have dipole dipole because we've got two non-polar molecules. So therefore we don't have hydrogen bonding. Okay, we haven't got an ion or a dipole inducing. So we just have dispersion forces left. So when they get close enough to each other, there will be a slight shift in electrons, very, very temporarily and smallly, that they will have a small, small, teeny, teeny, teeny attraction between the two. But not much. So the only one that exists between methane and carbon dioxide is dispersion forces. Okay, got enough to go on with these videos, Year 12. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about the strengths of these forces and start to look at how these forces affect um, the physical properties of things. Okay, thanks for listening, guys.